Good morning, everybody. Mashi Sukuri coming to you from Tokyo, Japan, and welcome to episode number 10 on the Path of Capoeira. I just want to say that I'm having a blast doing these uh, podcasts, and it's been a really great experience so far, and I'm so glad you guys are liking them. So let's jump right into it and get things started. This morning when I was coming to the Academia, I was thinking about something that somebody had asked when I was at a bachizado recently. And they'd asked me, what's the value of a cordon, the capoeira belt? And it's something that I think is very difficult for people to understand because as with anything in any art, one year, 10 years, and 20 years of experience gives people different perspective in the art. For example, I couldn't compare my experience to somebody like Mestre Accordion, Mestre Boagente, who've been in the art and living the art for more more than, than I've been around. So I can only give my experience and my opinion as someone who not only has dedicated the last 30 years of their life to capoeira, but also someone who, who lives from capoeira. This is not something that is negative. There's nothing wrong with getting what you deserve and working from capoeira. Whenever a person comes in, we have to keep the business side um, in mind so that we can keep our academia doors open so I can feed my family, so I can pay the lights, so I can pay the rent. So when we talk about the cordon, I think what I have seen the cordon system or the capoeira belt system is like with any other martial arts or ranking in the world. Once it becomes commercialized, there are people who are going to use it to commercialize and just to make money. To be honest, that's going to happen no matter what. And there were times in my life where I thought, oh, that's wrong and I was negative and I have to protect capoeira, blah, blah, blah. But you know what? If you look at the, at the greatness of capoeira and how it's been around for 400 years, somebody very wise once told me, capoeira has been around for 400 years. It doesn't need anybody to protect it. And it will continue to go. And I truly believe that. So, what is a cordon? I wrote some notes today hoping to be a little bit more organized and be able to do things in a, in a more practical way. So this is my opinion you don't have to agree. It's just an opinion. I think that as I've traveled, when I was traveling through Europe, through experience in Brazil, experience in America, especially now in Asia, where Capoeira is so far from Brazil and, and the language accessibility for people in Asia, for Portuguese and for the dynamics, even in English is so, is so very difficult to communicate culture. But that's a different topic. So let's stay on point with cordons. A cordon has several different meanings. One, it can mark the time in capoeira. Some groups, some teachers just give cordon every year, whether the quality has changed or not, whether they have requirements or not. And if the cordon system is in balance, that creates um, conflict within that group. First and foremost, a cordon only has value of what we put into it or what other people support us in. There are people who don't support my cordon. I can't do anything about it. There are people who do. That's the reality of anything that's intangible, that we have to believe in. So, the first point is a cordon is awarded by a group to a capoeira who has dedicated a certain amount of time or paid a certain amount of money. Either or, it's the opinion of that group. So if your group doesn't give cordons easy, does it matter that another group does? Of course, as human beings, we feel like, wait, why are they doing that? Why didn't? But you know what? There's really no way to control it. No matter how many federations, no matter how many groups, no matter how many masters, no matter how much the community is involved, cordons are really arbitrary and can be, not arbitrary, I'll take that back, but it can be 
as easy as just a master shows up every year, which we see a lot in Asia, shows up, no real communication with groups, give the cordon, get paid their workshop, bachizal fees, and leave. That's the dynamic of the system now. Is it right or wrong? That's everybody's opinion. Whether you want to participate in that or not is your own choice. There were times that I, I criticized the system, but now I realize, look, it's my choice. Just like the Hoda. It's your choice to go in or not to go in. One thing, um, my papa Damion, a really old, not old, but he's about 75 and a really amazing person. He's a musician here, old school from Rio de Janeiro. Damion de Salsa, I'll use his name because he's like my father, adopted father here in Japan. He told me one time, Ô, oh, Sucuri, escravidão não acabou. Você não tem que fazer nada pra ninguém. Você só, you know, slavery is over. You owe nothing or you have to do nothing you don't want to. This is the dynamics of, of capoeira, which I think is very important. We're based on slave culture from Brazil. It's over. You don't owe anybody anything. So, the cordon is only the value you put into it. Now, I'm going to show you how I perceive the cordon. I've had groups under me, and I've participated in bachizados where people have gotten cordons, which I felt don't have the level that it should for that cordon. But here's the thing. Who am I to judge that other person who I haven't seen or grown or taught for a year or two, who hasn't been their instructor. At the end of the day, the person awarding the cordon is responsible, nobody else. Not the group, not the teacher, not the not the master of the group, no. The person who's in charge of that group on that location. For me, I noticed one thing that I saw a lot when I was traveling and when I have the opportunity to go. I see two types of cordons. One I want to call cordon de casa, which is not my expression. And then cordon de formatura or forma, you know, or to graduate. Here's the main difference that I see. For example, cordon de casa you have now people who are doing capoeira for 10, 20, 30 years in a group. I am blessed to have students who have been with me for over 15, almost 20 years. They have other lives besides capoeira. There will never be someone who's completely involved in capoeira. Why? Because we're human beings. We have to eat. We have to go to family events. We have to... There's no one who's 24-7 capoeira no matter who likes to say they are. Because you have to sleep. Unless you're dreaming about capoeira all the time, and I, I don't know if that's even healthy, but I love capoeira and, I, and every day. I'm involved in capoeira and Brazilian music and dance, so. But I'm not 24-7 because it's impossible. But we do have people who are involved, who come to class regularly, who pay their fees, who support the academia, who go to events, who support visiting instructors and masters. Are these people to be less valued than someone who's trying to become cordon de formatura? Or what I consider someone who wants to take the responsibility of becoming an instructor or a leader in the group or in capoeira? Regardless if they leave my group, are they on a path to teach? For whatever reason, commercial, philosophical, spiritual, any reason. Are they on a path to teach capoeira? Or to make money from it. For example, doing workshops, being involved, having other groups call, and having their their fees paid for. Or are they someone who's living capoeira as part of their life? I think this is very important because not everyone is going to be hardcore capoeira for 20 years and say, okay, now they deserve to be a master. I don't think that's logical or even practical. Yes, there are people who do it. I'm not putting that down. But I am saying we have to think about these cordon chicasa. For example, I have students, 10, 15 adults, who have been with me for well, over 10 years each, some of them over 15. Should I hold them back? 
Should I not? What is the value of their cordon? This is where I take a stand. When people ask me, is that person formado? Is that person graduated? Is that person in structure? I have to lead and clearly say, that person is a cordon de casa, has a lot of experience of value. Are they an instructor level? I have to be clear and have the, the confidence and the understanding, yes or no. I make that decision in my academia, in my group that I am constantly involved with. So, yes, I have cordon de casa. Uh, are they leveling up in cordon? Yes. Is the value the same as somebody who's professionally doing capoeira to, to, you know, teach, to lead, to do? No. But it doesn't mean that the value is less. Because there are people who have been fantastic parts of groups and have been around forever and they give so much to capoeira without indirectly being involved in it all the time. Because capoeira is not just a joda, but the whole community around it. So these cordons de casa or cordons of the house or of your academia are also very important. The standards are more time relevant versus Skill, quality, knowledge, relevant. Why? Because they've been around forever. These are cordon de casas. This, I have these. On the other side, we have cordons, what I call cordons de formatura, who are people who have actively searched or looked for information and tried to develop their own base in capoeira or what we do, Afro-Brazilian culture, Afro-descendente cultura, and are part of capoeira in a more, not as a hobby that they've been doing forever, but as something as part of their life. It doesn't devaluate that. It doesn't devaluate one or the other. It's just different paths in their capoeira journey. For example, if somebody comes in and they're like, okay, I want to, and I have, my, my nephew's, my adopted nephew's a fantastic example. He's been doing capoeira since he was seven. Now he's uh, going to school in the States. He does everything, sings, beating bow. He knows the history of capoeira, the rituals, Afro-Brazilian dance, samba. He's done shows, everything. But right now he's in, going in school. So does that mean it's because it's last year he hasn't had the opportunity to train capoeira as much as he'd like to or travel that he losing? Although he still plays music, still practices him by himself, he still practices by himself, he's still training and he's doing everything. So we have to keep those things in mind when we award cordon. And this person who got, when he got his formatura, or his blue cordon, which is in our group, graduated, he had a gra uh, education of a set format that I created for what I believe he needed to get that cordon. There are people who have the same level cordon, but don't have that complete education in Capoeira. Different paths, cordon de casa, cordon de ano formatura. This one is more time-based, while this one is more um, interactive-based, or more based on how deep and how hard and how much information they live with of Capoeira. Remember, cordon is just a piece of material that you wrap around your your waist. It only has the value that we put into it. If somebody doesn't value it, that's their choice. If you don't know why, then that's your responsibility to go out and, and learn. Why? Ask. If people don't want to help you, they don't help you. If people want to help you, they'll help you. In the path of capoeira, we, we, we see these cordons that the students wear and we aspire to have those ranks. Whether it's time-based, cordon de casa, or formatura based, somebody who's literally trying to make their path or their, their identity in capoeira. I really feel that sometimes cordons get politicized and we don't need to because at the end of the day, cordon is just like money paper. It's if the value somebody has in it. 
if we don't value money, then it really doesn't have any value. It's used paper, actually. So we put the value in cordon as a community or as a person. And I really believe it's up to each individual capoeirista to put the value of their cordon they want to put. For example, people want cordons faster. Some people don't want the responsibility of the cordons. That's fine. I just thought I would share some of these ideas about cordon because I was thinking about it a lot. I'm always thinking about it, but last night, this morning, I woke up thinking about it, so I thought I'd share that with you guys. So what is the cordon? Cordon is the value we put in it. Are there different reasons for getting a cordon, for not getting a cordon? Yes. One thing I would say, though, if you have questions about cordons, instructors, teachers, masters should be clear and tell people and tell the person getting a cordon or not getting a cordon why or why not they're receiving their next graduation and which side just handing out a cordon is actually a very powerful thing to do you're giving affirmation to an identity of capoeira some people work very hard for cordons and it takes a long time some people don't and they get it easy but then again, a cordon is just something we give, but that we as masters, contramasters, professores, instructores, people running capoeira groups, leadership, it's a very difficult thing to decide every year, every two years. I would say it would, the most important thing to do is to create a dialogue with students, not hold some mysterious, oh, a cordon you won't understand, oh, cordons you get when you deserve, oh, oh. I think we really need to create dialogue. Why? Because people are putting time, energy, and resources in to capoeira. Would you go to a restaurant and ask somebody, oh, what's what's on the dinner plate? They say, oh, don't worry, you'll get it. Would you go to a movie and you walked into the movie theater and you go, okay, what's playing? Oh, don't worry, it's a good movie. No, we don't work that way. As human beings, we don't work that way, especially as people who are paying for a service, paying for capoeira classes. As instructors, we need to create a good dialogue and a good dynamic and communicate why or why not we're giving the cordon. These are just a couple of thoughts about cordon. I welcome any feedback. I know I can't cover everything in 20 minutes. Like I said, groups give cordons for different reasons. If I can only know what I'm doing for my group, I cannot judge other groups. I used to. I don't anymore. Why? It's my choice. Same thing. If somebody says, oh, can you come? We're going to do this. Can you support our, our, our bachado? Or I'm going to give this cordon. If I don't agree, I don't have to go. If I agree, I go. It's up to me. Maybe I say I want to go because the money's good. Maybe I don't want to go because the money's bad. But again, we are obligated to nothing in capoeira. Capoeira is the art of freedom. We do capoeira because we love it. We do capoeira because it's fantastic and it's powerful and it's ashe. Capoeira is beautiful. That's why I've dedicated my life to it. and And every day I fall more in love with it. So if you're thinking about a cordon, or if you're judging other people's cordons, I think the old expression is best. Don't judge unless you've walked a mile in this person's shoes. Or don't judge unless you've done the jinga in those person's shoes. I hope this helps. I hope people still see capoeira as, a, as an incredible art that needs to, that always deserves our respect and admiration and love. And that we grow in capoeira as best we can. Ashe. Ah,